Nazis after the war to move to Argentina. They were famous for that. So it's a very much a fascist system that was there, military dictatorship. We've seen, however, throughout Central and Latin America what happens when the Pope's economic policies that he's trying to sell to us as compassion, that's always the way they package it. We've seen what happens to that. We can see what's going on in Venezuela right now. We know that people don't have the money for food, for water, for medicine. They're going to other countries. They're coming to America. That system that the Pope is trying to sell, that the Jesuits have been trying to sell for decades since the early 1970s, called liberation theology, is nothing but warmed over Marxism with a compassionate face on it. It isn't going to provide the necessities that people need. It's not capable of it. We have an imperfect system. We have problems with our system, corruption, crony capitalism. We need to reform and correct the system, not level it and create something that Obama and the Pope would like to see here. And of course, it's going to be done in the name of climate change as well. Let's take a look at the facade of climate change. So when Jakari and I walked up here, what I saw was a massive restructuring. That's what it looks like with the scaffolding that's on the Capitol. I saw a massive restructuring of the government with a facade of climate change based on a moral case. The irony of all this is that the only thing that's not changing in our government in our religion and the Catholic Church and the traditional family. The only thing out of all of that that's not changing is the climate. But they're going to use that to try to make a moral case. You want to make a moral case? Talk about why we're being flooded into this country with economic refugees fleeing the very system that the Pope wants to establish. The hypocrisy of saying, I'm going to come across the border where these people are coming across the border, yet deciding, nah, you know what, I think I'll come in with my own private jet. But I'll drive out in a Fiat 500. Is that the Abarth edition? I don't know, okay? This is beyond ridiculous, but this is the pageantry. This is the way it's being sold, the symbolism. Look at the symbolism. This is our government being restructured, being manufactured with a false agenda into an alien being that we don't understand. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight with Jakari Jackson. We're here in Washington, D.C., waiting for the next shoe to drop tomorrow with the papal visit. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of Nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash afterwards, really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. Still damaging your brain. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended
grade or extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water. For your preparedness storage or your home kitchen, purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Did you know that there are nearly 450 nuclear reactors in the world? That's right, and there's also hundreds more either under construction or in the planning stages right now. In fact, right here in the United States, we have 104 nuclear reactors. Imagine what would happen to our civilization and the planet's ecosystems if we were to suddenly witness not just one or two nuclear meltdowns, but a multitude of meltdowns and reactors all failing at approximately the same time. I mean, do you think that this could actually happen? Well, what if I were to tell you that there are many experts who are out there who are very concerned about this, and they are out there publicly sounding the alarm bells right now? because they are saying that this apocalyptic scenario is not only possible, but probable. What would happen if there was a successful EMP attack launched against the United States? A deliberate detonation of a nuclear device at high altitude with the potential to cause serious damage to electronics and electrical power grids across the country. During a widespread grid collapse, the nuclear reactor's backup generators will either fail to start or run out of fuel, and that means the reactor cores will ultimately melt down. A serious warning from top national security experts. They say an electromagnetic pulse attack, also known as an EMP, could be devastating. It could easily damage the country's critical infrastructure, especially the electrical grid. It is the greatest threat that our nation and Western civilization faces. You know, it was deeply classified throughout most of the Cold War, and only after the EMP Commission reports declassified much of the information about EMP did it become publicly known. And so it is one of the least understood threats, and yet the greatest threat that we face. An EMP produces damaging current and voltage surges, burning out the semiconductor chip of any electronic device within line of sight. The result of that is a complete shutdown of the electronic system. You set off a nuclear weapon a couple hundred miles above the United States in terms of altitude, and it is designed so that it emits a lot of gamma rays. Those gamma rays, in effect, will strike our electrical grid and uh, burn out uh, a lot of major transformers that are, are part of that grid. And you end up in a situation where we're not talking just about a few days of loss of power or weeks. Uh, we're talking months or maybe even years. The same nightmarish scenario is expected after a massive solar storm, an extreme GMD of such magnitude that it would initiate a chain of events leading to catastrophic failures at the vast majority of our world's nuclear reactors. It would wipe out most of our satellites short circuit their machinery. We would black out our weather satellites, GPS systems, telecommunications, the internet. It would literally shut down our civilization. You know, it would destroy the electric grid and our critical infrastructures and put at risk the lives of up to 90% of the American people. It's the end of the industrialized world as we know it, an environmental destruction on the scale of Armageddon.
Best-selling author and MIT trained engineer Matt Stein joins us now to help us assess the risk involved in both of these potential disasters. Because, uh, Mr. Stein, I don't think people realize just how dangerous this is and how possible that, that we might be able to, we might witness either an EMP strike or a massive solar storm in our lifetime. Am I right? Oh, this is, it's most likely we're going to see it. I mean, the chances statistically are a one in eight chance every decade. And it's been nine decades since the last extreme solar event in 1921. And it was only six decades before that to the extreme event uh, of modern history called the Carrington event the Carrington in 1859. Event. That's right. So here we've seen two in the last 150 years, and it's been 90 years since the last one. So it's kind of like a once every generation event. And my dad was 86 years old when he died. He was born just after the last one and died a few years back. And so we're due for the next one. It could be any day. You just, you just don't know. It's like a statistical crap shot. You roll the dice, and one of these days we're going to get snake eyes. And so far, the government has totally ignored um, making any plans to actually prevent kind of the end of the world as we know it in, when the next one happens. It's, it's a real shame. They've been... Uh, experts come in and lobbyists and they say to the government, hey, we've got a cover, don't worry. And then other experts say, no, we're not covered at all. We're going to have meltdown of society. We're going to lose nuclear power plants are going to melt down due to loss of fuel and backup cooling. And this is going to be a game over event. And, and we can protect it for a couple billion dollars. And the problem is, you know, experts on both sides saying both things and people listen to the one that tells them what they want to hear and they do nothing. Well, and I think most people have no idea that we've dodged the bullet several times recently. I, I know there's been massive uh, EMP burst uh, almost hitting us back in 2012, 2013, 2014. And if these storms would have hit directly over the continent, I mean, the result would have been catastrophic. Yeah, it, it would have meant uh, months to years with no grid you know, for most of the country. It would have meant that, uh, you know, think, imagine a life with... You're in a city of 10 million people, and you got no water system, you got no sewage systems, you got no internet, you got no phones, you got no gas pumping, you got no banking. You know, you go to the money machines and they're all dead. You go to the store, you try to buy everything. Everything's electronic. There's no mechanical systems. Nothing is working. And where does a city of 10 million people pee and poo when none of that stuff's working. I mean, it, you're talking third world instantly. You're talking three days of food on supply in, in every major city in the country. Not like when we were kids when there was a month of backup supplies in warehouses. Now it's just-in-time deliveries. Three days is all you got. And most of that will be gone in the first few hours or through looting because, you know, nobody will be able to buy anything anyways because none of the machines work, none of the electronics works. But what disappoints me is the fact that, and I do hold them responsible for not having a backup plan for the backup generators on these nuclear reactors. Tell us more about that. Well, the nuclear reactors are mandated by the NRC to have a week's worth of fuel on hand. And because normally in America, you never have power outages for more than a week and you can always bring them diesel trucks. But now imagine with an EMP or a massive solar storm like the 1921, that there's no power for a year, two years. I mean, in 2003 or 2006, a solar storm less than one-tenth as strong as the one we're talking about hit South Africa, wiped out 14 of their massive transformers, and they had to ration power and have rolling blackouts through the entire country for in a year before they could replace 14. The U.S. government study from the EMP Commission shows that we're going to lose 350 plus transformers, not 14, but 350, in the event of a major solar storm. Now, those things cost tens of millions of dollars each. There's a three-year waiting line to get one. They're custom-made. The grid relies totally upon them. We have a $2 billion fix to protect those transformers from EMP and solar storms, but so far they've ignored all pleas to implement them. They've listened to the guys telling them everything's okay and they're doing nothing. So this is, this is extremely serious and extremely likely. And, uh, you know, terrorist EMP, maybe yes, maybe no. Solar storm, guaranteed to happen. We just don't know when. It's, it's like they all knew a hurricane was going to hit New Orleans someday, and the levees were inadequate. Absolutely. And the engineers warned them for 50 years they were inadequate and needed replacing. Well, the attitude in government was, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It hasn't flooded yet. Well, that storm hit, and we lost most of New Orleans. 
When this storm hits, we're talking game-changing, game-over life on this world. 